when you are building your kit, uh, the first thing I want you to do is actually read the first part of the instructions, which is some safety information. Uh, a little bit of a safety warning there. And when you're tuning your box banjo, make sure that you are holding it away from your face or wearing safety glasses or both, ideally, so that if you overtune and break a string, uh, it's not gonna whip you in the eye and take out an eye or something. Uh, that's a that's a danger in making guitars is losing an eye to a to a broken string um, You don't want to do that. Also, I've noticed uh, so like I like I mentioned uh, during the build uh, Or as you'll see I've, I've got some tape on this uh, This clasp here because it was kind of flapping around some of the clasps close really well, but some of them don't um, so uh, you might tape it or use a little bit of hot glue. Hot glue is nice because you can always warm it up again to, to get it out again. Um, also, on mine, the neck is, is pretty smooth. I think, and they, they did some sanding on this, but uh, if, if you really wanna be really comfortable while you're playing, uh, I'd recommend getting a little sandpaper and trying to put a little bit of a round on these corners here. And uh, that's what I do on my guitars. Uh, that I make myself. I like those corners to be a little more round. Also, just uh, really inspect the neck, look close, make sure you're not going to get any slivers while you're playing because that would be terrible. All right, here's the build. All right, so in the box banjo kit, also known as a cigar box guitar kit, that's the traditional name for this kind of instrument, uh, but we're calling them box banjos because it's a box and we're using open tuning and it'll sound kind of like a banjo. Um, plus, when you're teaching in a school, uh, they don't like tobacco industry entanglements. So in your kit, whether you call it a cigar box guitar kit or a box banjo kit, here's what you got. We have a neck and it's been laser marked with the, uh, with the fret marks. Although in our case, uh, this will be a slide guitar and so it won't actually have frets here. The holes are pre-drilled. We also have little mark holes for the string trees and on the uh, tail end, we've got holes for the, uh, uh, for the string ferrules. In this case, the ferrules are not uh, ferrous, they're brass. And let's talk about the other bits here. We've got some bushings for the tuning machines. On the tuning machines, we have, we have some left-hand ones and, and a right-hand one. We've got the screws to hold those tuning machines down once we get them all set. We have a what's called a flying bridge, and this is what this is what contacts the strings, and transmits the vibration of the strings into the face of the box, which is how the guitar works. We have some screws for the string tree. We have some screws to attach the neck to the box. A threaded rod, which will serve as our nut for the guitar, and a threaded rod is really nice because you can make little adjustments as to where. Uh, the strings are placed. We've got a string pack with a uh, with a nice low 44, a nice high 12, and a nice high 9. And we're going to tune that to G, D, G, which is a, a pretty normal uh, tuning for a cigar box guitar tutorial on YouTube. Lots of tutorials start at G, D, G. But you can also use other open tunings. Uh, for example, you might tune this down to F, C, F, and it should still sound pretty good. I would probably not go higher than GDG, uh, uh, or you could even do EBE. Uh, although you might start sounding kind of flat as as your as your strings ring out. Also included is a slide, and this is required to play this kind of guitar. You will not be able to press the strings down to the neck because they're going to be kind of high above the neck. So we're going to use a slide for that slidey bluesy sound. Finally, the box. And the box has been pre-drilled. It looks like it's been laser drilled. And, and the laser actually made a little shadow down there as it uh, drilled that, that hole there. So let's begin by attaching the ferrules on the tail end. I have my screwdriver and my hammer. If you don't have a hammer with soft ends like this, I've, this is a plastic end and a rubber end, you can get a piece of wood, and I'd recommend using that between your hammer and the, uh, and the metal parts that you'll be installing. So
So we're going to switch this around so I can work with it more easily. I'm going to just put each of these in and it looks like I can actually just press those in, which is pretty nice. Flip it over and we'll put the other three in the back. And if those don't press in for you, that's when you get the old hammer out and give them a little pound. Now let's switch over to the headstock and let's put these, these tuner, whoops, tuning machine bushings in. And you know, that was, I just dropped that and they happened to send me a few extra parts, which is nice. So I don't have to interrupt my video to go chasing after that bushing. So, uh, Thank you, CB Giddy. Nice work. Uh, we're gonna just get these. We're gonna get these bushings. You want to get them started. You want to get them started so they're straight. And you might need to tap them in, or you might just be able to press them in. Yeah, it looks like I can just press them in. In this case, it looks like this neck. I'm guessing that's poplar, which is a which is a uh, kind of the. Uh, the softer end of the hardwood spectrum, but it's a great, uh, it's still a great wood for a guitar neck, especially one that you're making yourself. So let's get all these bushings put in. Come on, fella. The real trick here is to make sure they go in straight, and that's a big deal because you don't want them twisting and getting messed up or anything. Although, I tell you what, you know, I make a lot of guitars and I actually use the same style of tuners in my builds. And so if you make a mistake and break something, uh, just check in with me and there's a pretty good chance I'll be able to help you uh, uh, with, with some spare parts. Okay, now with the tuner machines or tuning machines as these are called, uh, the trick with these is that you want that internal point pointing down or alternatively you want the gear pointing away from the head and toward the tail so we'll just kind of set that in there also if you look real close you'll see there's some little tiny marks to get to help get the uh, to help get the screws started for these so we'll, we'll get that uh, set there that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to, I'm just going to hold this like so. And I'm going to see if I can start this screw. And if it doesn't start for you, you might want to get a gouge or if you, or if you have a center punch, you can, uh, you can kind of get that hole down a little bit, a little bit deeper. But what you're going to want to do is take your screwdriver, you want to push in kind of hard to start until that screw starts grabbing and then and then just turn it home. Um, be careful not to over tighten the screw. Once you get it started, you don't need to push very hard and just watch close while you get that screw in there snug. Just just hand tighten to snugness. If you over tighten, you could strip the screw and that's a little bit of a headache. Um, so we get these all put in and, and, on the, and again I'll do some kind of heavy pressure to start it. Get those screw points in there and into the wood grain. And then once I feel it grabbing then I can kind of ease off the pressure and just turn it. And if you if it's slipping, you know you might want to give it a little more pressure, but don't uh, don't don't over tighten. Just get it just get it down so the screw head is contacting the face of that tuner, and that'll that should be good enough. And remember the job of that of these two screws. Uh, the main job, I suppose, is to hold that tuner flush to the neck, but 
uh, probably even more importantly is to keep that tuner from spinning in the hole. Uh, so just getting that screw in there, as long as there's a post here and here, that tuner is going to get its job done just fine. All right, now let's put this one in. And by the way, we're in the we're on the back side of the neck. Oh look, I messed up. This gear is pointing down toward the tail. This gear is pointing up toward the head. So we don't want that. That's the correct way to put it. So it needs to go in this hole. Let's do that. And then remember that other that other hint is that on your on your necks you'll see some little tiny just divots marks to help uh, get those screws started. So make sure those are lined up with those little tiny marks. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but that's what we're doing. All right, we'll get this started. Whoop. Come on now. Oh boy. Okay, now this is a this is a case where the hole's a little bit tough. Like where the where we're having a little bit of trouble getting that screw started. So I'm just gonna take my screwdriver here. I'm gonna find that little divot uh, where uh, where that screw is supposed to go. I'm gonna just push on it a little bit. Makes that divot a little bit more pronounced. And let's try again. Getting the screws started sometimes is, a, is, is the tough part. Also, if you have a drill, uh, that's another option. You can, uh, you can drill a little pilot hole to help get these started. And you'll want to use a very skinny drill bit for that. There we go. Just snug. Don't over tighten it. Here we go with another. And I tell you what, I'm not seeing a good starter hole for this one either, so I'm actually going to try a little trick. I'm going to get that held down. You want to hold it kind of straight. You want to be careful not to hurt yourself. Also, uh, make sure you read the safety instructions in the manual. I should have mentioned that at the top. You can just give that a little tap, just a gentle tap. Well, poplar is a, I think it's considered a hardwood. It's still pretty soft. And uh, that should help you get your screws started if you're having any difficulty. Although on the ones I saw in the classroom, uh, it looks like they are all marked fairly well. Okay, one more to go. And just as a sanity check, I like to make sure I've got all the gears pointing down, away from the head. And that looks pretty good. I'm not sure why my video did that. There we go, I'm using a using a GoPro and it's a, actually a normally it's a spherical camera type GoPro and so it tries to auto adjust for level and sometimes it gets a little squirrely although it's uh, it's been very very good uh, video camera so far All right, that's getting started Last screw for the tuning machines. That's what these are officially called, but you could call them tuners, I suppose, or uh, some some uh, guitarists will call them tuning pegs. Whoop. 
Oops, come on now. Straight in, steady as she goes. There we go. This thing's starting to look like a guitar. Now, we're gonna put in these guys. And these are these are gonna serve a purpose uh, called, known as a string tree. And they'll help position the strings properly so they don't pull that nut sideways. So this thing's gonna go here and it's just gonna sit there. The string pressure will hold it down, but these little uh, uh, string tree screws are going to hold it in the right position. Uh, they will hold the strings in the right position so that uh, they, so they don't skew this thing off to one side or another. So we'll put in our string trees and what we're doing with these is we're only gonna, we're only gonna put them in about halfway. So we'll get it started there. Just get that put in about halfway. And these these screws, their job is just to be a string guide. They're gonna help help uh, guide the string before it hits that nut. And the nut being this part of the guitar. It's uh, and it's kind of a the nut is kind of a bolt in this case. And in pretty much every case in the guitars I build. Well, looks like the Camera's going a little sideways again. Okay. And you shouldn't be over tightening these because we're only going in about halfway. I'll bring that closer to the camera so you can see. There's the back of the headstock. All right, now it's time to attach the neck to the box. I'm going to adjust my camera just a little bit here. Maybe keep it, I'll help it remember to not try to auto level so much. Okay. That's what these two screws are for, and you'll see they've got this, these, uh, these kind of drilly bits on the end of them. And fortunately, on the back of the neck, We've got a couple of holes ready to go, and those holes are going to match up with these holes that have been laser drilled into this box. So, it's a little bit tricky, but you'll, uh, you'll get your neck on top of the box, try and find those holes to line them up. You might have to back off a little to see them. And then, once, once you think you've got it, once, at least once you've got one, you can start, whoops, start that screw. I'm just gonna press it in there a little bit. And screw it in. And remember to hold pressure between that neck and the box lid so that it all pulls together. These ones you want, again, you want them snug, but you don't want to over tighten it. So just get down till it, till it's pretty snug. All right, now I'm looking carefully through the hole here. I want to be careful not to mess up the alignment. I want the hole that was pre-drilled in the neck to match up with the little laser drilled hole here. Looks like we've got it. 
and then I'll just give that a little bit of a push. And screw that in as well. And hold this a different way. Just because, whoops. What I want to do is uh, hold that neck against that that box lid and tighten that right down. And again, don't over tighten, just get it snug. That feels pretty good. Maybe, maybe just a little more. Okay, yeah, there we go. All right. Now it's really starting to look like a guitar, huh? So we're gonna close that flap there. Now some sometimes that thing is a little bit floppy. And the way that uh, I might deal with that is either, uh, I, I, don't, I wouldn't like to glue that down, um, but maybe, maybe just throw a little tape on there. Or another option might be to, to very carefully uh, put a little bend on this clasp. Although that doesn't seem to be working in this case. So I'll probably, for now, I'm probably going to just tape that. Uh, although with a little bit of hot glue, if you have a hot glue gun, um, you could put a, a dab of hot glue there to keep that from flopping. Most of the boxes I saw that came in, uh, that thing closes pretty well. But in, in, this, in this case, it's a little, little floppy. So that might buzz while you're playing. Uh, and if that bothers you, just tape it down or hot glue it down and you should be fine. All right, well now it's time to string this thing up. You'll notice on the neck you've got all these laser marks and then way down here you've got another mark. That's the bridge mark and that is 25 inches from here to here. That's the uh, scale length of the guitar. And so when you're, uh, if you decide you want different strings, um, you're going to want to look for string recommendations for a 25 inch scale length. Here's our flying bridge. Now looking close at that, you might need, uh, uh, once we get the strings on there, uh, the strings might bite into that a little bit, or you might need to actually get a pocket knife and very carefully notch where you want those strings positioned. But for now, let's just put it on like so. That's how the bridge is gonna sit. And you see how the, whoops. You see how that bridge kind of rides above the neck. That's why we call it a flying bridge. And, and that's, this thing is where, where all, the, uh, all the science is happening or all the magic's happening. Uh, when you pluck a string, the string vibrates. This transmits the vibration into the face of the guitar. The face starts vibrating. And because the face is vibrating, uh, this, this resonant chamber has these holes in it. And it's able to push and pull air out of these holes. And that's, and that's what makes a nice loud guitar sound. So, so that bridge is... Just fine right there. I'm just gonna let it kind of set. And now let's open up the string pack. All right. Now in these strings, we've got we've got a couple of shiny silver ones, and one big fat uh, kind of gold-looking one or bronze-looking one. And those are just kind of wrapped around each other. You see, I'll just kind of unwrap that. You want to be careful not to uh, take your eye out with this um, especially when you're tuning and i'll show you how to how to do that in a minute but what we're going to do is we're going to take that big fat one first and you know what? i'm actually going to take that bridge off again we're going to take that big fat one and we're going to move it to the end here and i'm going to push it through that that one is I'm looking at the front of the guitar. I 
going to push that through the leftmost hole. We're going to pull it all the way through. And you see that ball end on the string is keeping it from going all the way through. And the reason we put these metal parts here is so that it keeps the string from tearing through the wood over time because these strings are going to be under tension. So what I like to do is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get that pulled through, make sure that ball is all the way to the end. And I'll give that just a little push to kind of give it a little crease. I'm going to pull this string up and And I'm going to go on this side of the string tree because I want the string to stay over here. If I go in the middle of the string tree, uh, the string's gonna go all skiwampus, so we don't, we don't want that. So let's have it on the outside of the string tree. Now, the string goes on the inside of the tuning machine, or the tuning uh, post. And if you look really close at these tuning posts, oh my goodness, that end, I might have to tape that after all. Um, these tuning posts have a little hole in them. And so what I like to do is I like to put my thumb like so. I'm gonna wrap around once, twice, and in this case, I'll go thrice. And you want to wrap from the bottom to the top and then poke the end through that hole in the post. Poke it all the way through, all the way, and pull it tight. And just to really tell it you mean business, Give that thing a couple turns and if, it, if the tuner is on this side you're going to turn away up and away and you'll see that thing is turning all right that's the first one now on the second one we're going to go the the next fattest string but with these thin steel strings, it's kind of hard to tell which one of these is the thinner one. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll hold them like this and I'll just kind of let them, I'll hold them down here at the bottom. I'll let them hang. And the one that, the one that's, uh, the one that's less straight is the thinner one because there's less material to hold it straight. So take the straighter one and that's going to be your middle string. And again, we'll go in the bottom of the tail. Pull it through until the ball end is, is in contact there. I'm going to give that a little bit of a crease by press, pressing this part down. And we'll bring it up this way. And this time, I'm going on, like the tuner pegs that I'm, that I'm heading for are over here. So I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna go between these two with the string. And also I'm gonna, when I wrap this on the post, I'm gonna hold that with my thumb and I wrap from the inside out, always on the inside of a, of a post. So you go around once, and I'm just using this to, using my thumb to hold things down or rearrange things, going around twice and three times, and then through the hole. And we'll pull it tight, and you wanna make sure that that uh, that that string coming through the hole is above all those wraps that we just made and this one 
to tune it tighter, you actually tune toward the guitar. It kind of, it's, uh, uh, if you're already a guitar player, that should be kind of intuitive. Uh, but if you're not, that's, uh, that's just tradition, I guess. It's how we do it. Don't over tighten it. You just want, you just want enough, enough tightness to hold those down because it's not quite a guitar yet. Now that last string, this is the nine. Thin little guy. We're gonna go through that, that. Those ferrules on the bottom, pull it through. Make sure the ball is touching the end. Give it a crease. Bring it up. And this one, let's see. This one, I'm actually gonna go on the outside of the string tree and then back inside because we need to, we need to uh, wrap from the inside of a tuning post. And on these nines, sometimes they'll, they'll try to get squirrely on you. They might slip. They're kind of hard to hold on to. So I might wrap that around four or five times before I go through the hole. There we go. And where's the hole? Uh, it's over here is convenient. I'll go through the hole right in here. Whoop. Now I went through the hole, but I was not above the last wrap. So I gotta pull that tight, make sure I'm above that last wrap. Go through the hole. And you know, these string, these are actually thin enough they can poke you, so be careful about that. And now we'll uh, remember to tighten on these two. You're going to turn this way. The top goes toward the body. But on this side, it's opposite. And again, just, just spin it enough to give that string some tension to hold it in place. Alrighty, now we're almost done. Let's put in the flying bridge. So I'm going to take and lift those strings up so they should not be so tight that you can't lift them up. And we'll bring that bridge down here and we'll stand it up on the mark. Remember that bridge should be right over that, that mark there. And now the nut, which is this little threaded rod, I will kind of lift those strings up a little bit, and they're gonna they're gonna get into some grooves on the threaded rod. And as you move it up, you might need to kind of move those strings, one rod or or one thread or two left or right or whatever. Bring it all the way up, and it's gonna go click and kind of sit in that little laser cut trough there. All right, let's look close. I want that middle string a little bit this side. Well, that's pretty good up there. Okay, now at the bottom on the, uh, on the bridge, the flying bridge, this one, I'm not sure if I want to take a pocket knife and notch that or, or what. I think I think I might actually. Let me get I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get a little knife and put a notch in that. Where'd my knife go? And if you don't have a knife. Uh, you, that wood is soft enough you can just kind of give it a little notch with a just any, any sharp metallic tool. In fact, I'll demonstrate that with my pliers here. So the middle one should do just fine where it's at. Um, it'll end up biting down into that piece of wood just fine. Yeah, uh, one way to do this, and maybe not the best way, is to kind of decide where you want this to be notched. And, I've, and I'm just using a piece of 
I'm using some uh, needle nose pliers here. They've got that little bit of serrated edge there. And I'm just giving it a little, just a tiny little saddle for that to hold that string. And I'm going to do the same over on this side. Essentially, you want these strings to be parallel as they come down from the nut up top there. And I'll just give this a little, little one. There we go. Bring that there. That middle one will actually, I, I think that one's going to just self-correct. Uh, so just make sure it stays in the middle. Now it's time to tune this thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to tune it to G, D, G. And we'll start, we'll, we'll start by creeping up on it. We'll actually tune it to uh, F, C, F first. And then we'll go to G, D, G. So... Um, I've got a tuning app here. You can just get a uh, guitar tuning app on your phone, or you can just go listen to YouTube. And uh, and pretty much every cigar box guitar uh, tutorial is going to have a little tuning section right up front, will, where they'll they'll just play the notes and you can tune to it. But uh, to tune it, make sure your strings are where they're supposed to be. And I'll start with this with this big guy. Boy, that's a guitar now. It's making the noise. Okay. I'm going to hold a little pressure on that, and I'm going to... I'm just going to start tightening this a little bit. Give it a couple, just a turn or two. And I'm watching my tuner and while you're doing this there is a danger that the strings could break and whip you and so you want to make sure your face is not anywhere where those strings are going to be able to fly up and hit you or uh, at least be wearing some safety glasses Watching my tuner. I'm actually not worrying about this bottom section. I'm just watching the top, and I'm gonna go. I'm going for F here. All right, that's that's good, and that's holding there. Uh, also, when I tuned that big fat string, the tension actually pulled the bridge to the side a little bit. And as you tune, as you cinch in those the other strings, uh, they should help uh, keep the bridge where it's supposed to be. So you might find yourself adjusting that a little bit. Just make sure it stays over that line uh, that's been marked on the neck. Okay, now the middle string. That's going to be this one up here. And remember, we're going to we're going to kind of turn it down in guitar tradition. Let me get it to where it'll, where it'll play. And sometimes while you're, while you're cinching these uh, smaller diameter strings, they might slip a little. Actually, all the strings could slip a little while you're tuning. Okay, it's starting to grab now. And you'll notice as you as you tighten some strings, the other ones might loosen a little. Uh, so you might maybe I'll just tighten up that that little nine, that little tiny string on the end, just to you know. Make sure it's in its saddle. Okay, here we go. Right now we're going for F, C, F. Now you might hit a C. Like, so I'm at C right now. The 
that's lower than what this string is supposed to do. If I can push the string all the way to the neck like this, like really easy, then it's too loose. This one here is more like a trampoline, this, this big fat guy. So that tells me I gotta go a whole nother octave, a whole, all the way up to the next C. As I predicted that that's kind of chewing into the bridge just a little bit there that's that's good though that's that's what we want okay and then make sure that on that little tiny string let's make sure it's where it's supposed to be on the bridge and we're gonna tune it up and right now we're just going to F we're going to FCF Careful not to overtune this one. You want to really want to watch that app. Because this guy could break on you. Alright, so let's check the trampoline thing. Oh, no. This one's kind of a trampoline. This one is too. But this one, I can push all the way down. So we actually, I gotta go higher. So I hope I don't break it. We'll see. Another clue uh, when it's flat is it'll uh, you'll you'll pluck it and it'll and you'll see the the note will, will fall off. Oh, C is pretty close to where it's supposed to be. This is just kind of a it's as much of an art as it, as it is a science really. But I see that that high string is still pretty floppy. So I gotta keep tightening it. D now. And I'm just plucking it and turning just a little on that tuning machine. that little one up to E. Let's check these other two again. I'm because I'm look right now I'm trying to get to F C F. So let's make sure they're there. Or at least close. and close now. Okay, now it's the home stretch. We're going to get this all the way to GDG, which is the kind of the main cigar box guitar uh, sound here. So, so I'm going to tune this one up. We're going to get this big fat guy up to F sharp. And 
now this middle one to the C sharp. And you want to, and as you're as you're coming into a note, you want to come into it from the bottom. You don't want to come into it from the top because there's a something in machining. Uh, if you when you take a machine class in high school or college, you're going to learn about backlash, and there's a little bit of backlash in these. So uh, uh, always come up to the note from below. All right. So right now I'm going for. F sharp, C sharp, F sharp. sharp c sharp f sharp now let's get it all the way to g d g g is the next one up and i'm really going fine on this one small moves so take it right up to g good now this middle one is going to D. Make sure that one's back up at G. Might have to adjust. Because remember that the, the tightness of all these strings is actually pulling the neck forward. And uh, can, can affect the tunings of the rest of the strings. All right, now the moment of truth. Hope I don't break it. We gotta be real careful with this one. Small, small moves. We're going up to G. Just a quick check at the bridge. I'm looking to make sure that these are aligned correctly. They are. And we're bringing this up to G now. Very stressful. <laughs> And be careful not to have your face anywhere where this could hurt you if it's going to whip and hit you, just in case it breaks. Creeping up on that G, nice and slow. Small moves on the tuning machine and plucking a lot, watching my, my app there. And by the way, I'm using a Pro Guitar Tuner app. Uh, there's several available that are free. Um, see what you like best in your app store. Just creeping up on that G. That's pretty good. Check that middle one again. Make sure it's a D. And the bottom one. All right. 
We did it. That's a guitar. Howdy folks, Mr. Proctor here in my garage on a warm summer evening and I've just made this box banjo. And a couple of notes on that is I've, I've got these string ends sticking out of the, uh, the, the tuning pegs. You might want to get in there and once you're happy with the tuning or are you sure those strings are in the right place, uh, once you once you've assured yourself of that, you can go in with some some uh, wire cutters and, and snip those off, or you can just leave them on there if you want. But those, remember, those string ends are really pointy, and uh, can actually poke a hole in you. That's happened to me a couple of times. Oh, and also after I built it, I noticed that uh, my notches I cut in the bridge as I was building with my kind of janky, weird uh, uh, needle nose pliers method. They weren't deep enough, so I got a razor knife and I cut those notches a little bit deeper. And again, when you're using sharp tools, please be careful not to uh, hurt yourself. Um, those notches need to be deep enough that when you strum, you don't want the you don't want the strings flopping all over the place on the bridge. That, that's that's not good eats. Also, if you're interested in uh, contacting me, please use my school email account. That's the best way to contact me, and uh, uh, if you're one of my students, anyway. If if you're not one of my students, if you're not a student, then then f you can figure it out. But if you're a student, please use my school email account. Um, and uh, with that, I'll let you I'll let you be.